I decided to forge ahead with Project Fucked Up Power Adapter. Um, I've given up with the original compact one. The fuse uh, does test good on it, but the rest of it, I don't know. So then I had this brilliant idea that I was going to get this thing, this adapter. Fortunately, the case just came right apart with uh, a little persuasion of the right kind. It's a Chinese screwdriver. and uh, a Chinese power adapter, so if you use the right kind of screwdriver, it comes apart. I uh, plugged this thing in in the previous video, and it went beep, 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 which means that it's going into protection mode, and generally that would be caused by some sort of shorted out wire, and being that I saw that, I figured that's where it was. So I opened it up, slit off the wires, and now we shall grab the power adapter and plug this in. Let's see if I can get you a shot of this without stopping the camera for absolutely no reason. Not bad. I kind of like this little ghetto tripod. It works. Um, now this has like a shield on it and it's actually soldered on. So I don't know why but uh, anyway, that's disconnected, and now if I plug in in the right Mickey Mouse orientation, there is a green clean light. Oh, well, there was. I don't know what I just did. Hopefully it just went in protection. Oh, you know what happened is that actually shorted to the board. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's try that again, maybe with that folded back. I didn't even realize that that would have been a big problem. It's like, what do you put the fucking, you know, copper shielding there? That fucking costs money, you know? I wasn't looking to make an Electro Bloom video, Electro Boom video. All right, try again. See if it blows up this time. Well, I think it's fried now. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we'll get rid of this thing. It only ended up causing problems. You'd think, right, you know, that you'd get lucky sometimes. There's all the wires out. There's that which has a little thingamajobber on it. But I think it's blown now. I didn't even realize that that was going to be a problem. It just didn't... Sometimes you get, like, stupid when you're trying to do a million things at once, and, uh... Looks like we done blued it up, but, uh... I mean, the damn plug is so tight to fit in anyway. There's no green clean light now. Alright, well, maybe I did want to make an Electro Boom video. I didn't blow myself up too bad. Let's just see if it is outputting anything. I'm sure it's not. I don't even know which two wires. I'm sure... Oh. That's interesting. It still works! It's outputting 19.2. That's perfect. Um, the LED is still there. Maybe we ended up sending voltage to it that uh, that blew it up. I could live with a burned out LED. Really? It's working? Let me see if I can show you. Put the meter on there. That's plastic so it won't short out. I'll turn it straight, maybe. 
Sorry about the glare. See that? 19.21. I'm reading upside down in the camera. Well, that works for me. Cool, I didn't blow it up. All right, well, I'm gonna unplug it so I don't blow anything else up. It's out of the wall. Now, it's got charge all over it in places. I don't have that thing on it anymore, which I don't need, because it ended up blowing it the fuck up. Jeez, what a pain in the ass. So there's a black wire. There's a white wire. The black was negative. It looks like it's going to be hard to strip that. So I think I'm going to just try to solder. Well, maybe I'll use like a razor blade. Because I don't want to. I'm not soldering to the damn board. No way. Ain't doing that. This one I can strip with my little wire stripper. Not much. I just need a little bit. There. See how nice that worked? That's just the right amount. I think, actually, I'm going to be a little bold and try to get in there with uh, the wire stripper on the white wire as well. I don't like that. I don't know what it was, but I didn't like it. Lost two or three strands, but that's okay. Alright, so we got our voltage out. This thing will just tuck inside and hope it don't short to nothing. Just like that should be fine. And we'll go cook up the soldering iron again. A good thing to do before I do anything is to go and uh, cut this off the old one. Now I'm going to leave two inches or so so it can be fixed. I'll leave another inch, half an inch. We'll do that. Now I end up with a plug that's really only this long for what you can see in the thing. And what I'm going to do is just twist the wires on to this adapter and see if it will power the laptop without blowing anything up. In fact, I'll, I'll use my alligator clip wires to do that. It'll just be quicker and easier. Just try to strip off the right amount the first time. Get this out of here. So we don't need that kind. That's all fine and good. We'll measure for continuity. I want to see what the outside is. Figure out which wire that is. So if we just test the probes, that's about 4 ohms. That's about as close as this thing will read. About 4 ohms on that one, and nothing on that. So now I know which one is the black, and to mark that, I'm going to do this really easy, and just put my little black alligator clip wire on. Get this out of the way. Red alligator clip wire on. Red is going to go to the white. Should move the little boot on there. There we go. The other little white wire is nice and safe in there. Hopefully that ain't going to blow up. That looks safe right there. Now I have to kind of move that out of the way. I can't put it on there because it might short. I'll turn it upside down so it don't short on nothing there. We'll do that. Get the plug. I don't have the AC cord in the wall.
Uh, now we'll plug in. Well, let's open this first. It's not easy to open it even with one hand. I guess you can see the LEDs. No shorts. No shorts. Good. Blip is fine. In fact, it just powered on by itself. Let's see if you can see the LEDs and the lights there. That's off and on. And I'm not worried about that really, although we'll just run it for preps. Not worried about any of the uh, exit is F3. Oops, save changes. Not worried about any of the options or the date and time at this point. Eventually, you know, I, I do have a serial port on it and I can hook up. Uh, a nice external 2400 BPS modem and I have one somewhere I really do I actually have one an old serial modem that's 2400 BPS only so we'll just watch this boot up quick the soldering iron is heating up and there is the clock with the wrong time perfect and it booted up in 52 seconds Shuts right off. No power management or nothing. Just friggin' on or friggin' off. Let's uh, turn it back on a second. Unplug the adapter from the wall as soon as it comes up. It goes right out. That way it chooched out whatever residual stuff. Let's solder. Alright, uh, I don't have a good way on this to really attach these wires. So it's going to be kind of a, a hokey joint and we're going to kind of hope that the solder ends up doing the job. Oh, look at that. See, as much as I suck, isn't that a nice looking joint there? Love to smoke that guy, but I don't do that. Anywho. Uh, I just want to double check, make sure I have the right wire hooked up to there. I do. Here's the other one. And we'll try to make a similar jurnt on that. That one's actually a little sloppier, but it's all right. Um, let's see, we should elevate that a bit to uh, aid in soldering. Um, that's a piece of crap joint right there. That's what that is. If I had a pair of pliers, I could squeeze it a bit. I know you can't see nothing, but, you know, it is what it is right here. Okay. Let's just readjust that a little bit so you can see. I'm probably not going to be able to see anyway because my hand will be in the way. Let me zoom out a little bit just to give you a little better choo choo what I'm doing here. And judiciously apply the uh, solder. Uh-huh. 
careful. Put that back. That looks good. Slide the heat shrink over it. Yes, I put it on beforehand. If you don't put that on beforehand, you will not be able to get it on afterwards. So make sure you always put your heat shrink on beforewards. Otherwise, you will not be able to use it on the after kind. This one does not want to go on, so let me stop the camera for a second and fight with it. it took all of three seconds. Unplug the iron, and plug in the China Goodness heat gun. And uh, I guess we'll lowify that. I don't want to burn the towel to a crips. Blast it for a quick second. That'll work. Hope that doesn't fall over and burn me. Give that a few seconds to uh, goodify itself. That'll work. Larger piece of heat shrink that was pre-applied. Shoved over the weirs. All the way down. All the way inside the adapter. Put on the gun. And no one will ever know. Just like that. Heat gun will go in the sink so it don't get blown up. Now, uh, some of you might be asking what am I going to do for strain relief? Hot glue. Yep, that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is uh, this wire, if you can see, this little white wire, that's the one that has that black thing on it and I guess that's like an identifier kind of thing. Um, not going to use that kind so I'm going to glue it right there. So I'm going to get the glue gun now. You know all this trouble right to get the heat gun so that's what like 1600 watts I know it's only on for you know 20 seconds maybe at the most. And then the soldering iron that's maybe 30 or 40 watts this is maybe uh, 60 80 watts something like that. Like, is it worth all the trouble? Well, um, the answer is a resounding yes it is. Because we're saving old technology. Just powered it back up. It turns on whenever you plug the adapter in, but I don't care about that. Yeah, I forgot all its stuff. Good for you. How about just resume? Oh, no, I don't like that kind because it doesn't know the hard drive. So it has to reconfigure it, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, it works. You saw before. Same thing. So I'm going to unplug that before I go and plug something up again. <sighs> Try to get rid of any excess. I still can't open this freaking thing. Get rid of any excess power. Unplug. We'll get that and get everything glued up. So like I said, the reason why this is worth the trouble is because we're saving old technology. Now this stuff won't be around forever. Um, it's blatantly obvious that uh, it's not going into a landfill. So that's good. So we'll just glob some hot glue on that and let that set up for a little bit. Saving this from going in the landfill and we're repurposing it. 
A uh, guy who just subscribed to me, Bison Workshop. Check him out. A real cool guy. Uh, old school guy. I like that kind. He, he, uh, he has a workshop kind. So anyway, check him out. Uh, this should, I think it goes this way. Maybe I have the halves. No, that's right, yeah. Because the one with the light that don't work now goes here. But again, who needs that? I couldn't imagine it sat like that. So anyway, we're keeping this stuff uh, for the third time now out of the landfill and um, keeping old technology alive. Now this computer is, uh, I don't even know what kind of processor is in it, 386, 486, something like that. It's nothing that could do anything by today's standards. But you can still make it into a clock. And by turning it into a clock, you can have a conversation piece. And in that purdy. See? Just like that. And now, just glob the living shit out of it with hot glue, inside and out. Doesn't have to be clean or pretty. I didn't make it either. Don't touch hot glue, by the way. I think it's not good for you or something. And then, of course, you just get these strings that go on for miles. There we go. Yeah, check out Bison Workshop. He uh, commented on one of my videos on the Coleman air compressor, actually. And uh, it turns out he got one of his own, and he mentioned me in his video. So I want to put the word out there. Um, I haven't watched all of his videos, so I don't know exactly what he does but uh, for a lot of stuff. But he's got this whole workshop set up out in an old camping trailer. And um, he actually just built himself a silent air compressor. Still a little bit of a work in progress, but uh, coming along. And he's going to have another video on that coming up. Probably be up by the time you see this one. So anyway, go check him out. That's all glued up. Um, the case itself is also going to need some glue. Because uh, it just it, it's just not going to stay. Um, cyanoacrylate would, acrylate would be the right glue, but I don't want to go and get that kind. That might actually hold it, but I'll wait for that to set up and then uh, see if it's really necessary to go and uh, glue around it. It's not a bad idea, but I mean, how disgusting do you want it to look? Okay, I just added some more goo to it right over in this area. If you can see that kind, that's all dry over there, so I could touch that. And um, it's together. Um, the case will need some, some glue. Uh, let me see. I think I'm going to just try to run a bead, very light bead. That side's good. Scrape the rest off later with a thing. And this side, without the only problem is, of course, I can't really put it down. That's all right, like that. Let's see what's happening here. So we'll just put a real fine bead. And a little bit right in here. Slam it shut. That glue should dry momentarily. And that 
is how you redneck fix an AC adapter. This, uh, this repair will mostly hold true for even a modern laptop. Um, that third wire would have to be connected. Generally, the, the, um, you're either going to have a break in the plug that goes into the laptop itself, or you're going to have uh, a break in the, um, in the plug itself. I guess I can cool down the uh, goo gun now. Scrape off the rest of this. So the, the repair procedure that you saw, short of blowing shit up, which kind of was unintended in this case, but uh, I ended up stepping in shit and come out smelling like a rose, as they say. So I won. But like I was saying, the repair procedure would be the same for uh, even a modern laptop, modern thing, just as long as you hook all the wires back up. You'll either have a break in the plug itself, in which case you're going to have to find a replacement, or somewhere in the wire, usually where it goes into the uh, the adapter, just like this one had. And that's it. That is going to be it for this. So, it ends up that the Compact Contura lives again. And the reason why everything ended up working out is because it stopped snowing. Look at the light, there's no more. Blang! We're losing snow as it is already on the walk. So hopefully uh, tomorrow I wouldn't even need to brush or shovel this or broom it or anything. And that's it. And the rest won't go away till, uh, oh, August, I think. That's going to be it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Lost a fucking hubcap. So that's 40 bucks. Anyway, that'll do it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit like. Turns out this was a surprise. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.